Okay. All right. So this activity is a pretty. Um, okay. Let's let's get into it. Let me not. All right. So under the required, it says, for each of the companies, determine the following: allocation rate used during the year, and then total manufacturing costs as calculated during the year. And that's total manufacturing costs during the course of the year based on your allocation rate. Okay, we'll get into it. It'll make more sense as we do it. And then whether manufacturing costs were over or under applied during the year. So remember when we went through the slides, right? We're talking about the fact that during the course of the uh, financial year, we might not necessarily actually um, know how much our manufacturing overheads are going to be. But we obviously want to have an estimate so that we obviously reserve some money to cater to those costs. Okay? And that's why we calculate what is the application rate. All right? So based on past performance, we're saying roughly what do we anticipate our manufacturing overheads to be so that when we now obviously have to cater to them, it's not like some huge cost that we didn't anticipate entirely. All right. Now, calculating the allocation rate is different for different companies. All right. And you'll see that as we go into this now. But if you go into your textbook um, and we looked at this in the slides on page in my textbook, which is, I think, 2018. Yeah, 2018. It's on page 135. Um, in your textbook, I'm sure it's a few pages maybe forward, but it says predetermined overhead rates. Okay? And there you get budgeted units of production. That's measured in rand per unit. You have budgeted labor hours measured in rand per labor hour, and so forth, so forth. You can see the, the other three. Okay. Now, if you flip the page and you start to look at the example, they start to show you how you actually calculate those different rates okay? using the different bases. So for the first one, production, uh, product unit basis. If, we, if we're saying we're allocating according to the production, um, we then say the budgeted manufacturing overhead divided by the budgeted number of units. Okay, and when we're calculating the allocation rate, it's always going to be based on your budgeted overhead and your budgeted base, divided by your budgeted base. Does that make sense? Okay, so again, my textbook is different from yours. So I'm looking at example 5.6 in, in terms of the what I was just mentioning now. Make sense? Can you see? So this is what I was talking about. Yes. So this now gives you a practical example of how we calculate each, how we calculate these things under each uh, different allocation. Um, so we want to go to 12.5.12. Sorry. Okay. So now that we've touched on that. Okay, we can now look at the other information that we have there in the question. It says the following budgeted and actual information was, uh, sorry, with regards to three companies, company X, Y, and Z is supplied. We have the budgeted results. So at the beginning of the financial year, we said, what do we anticipate to be our budgeted variable overhead? What do we anticipate to be our budgeted fixed overhead? and labor hours, and labor cost, and uh, direct material cost, uh, budgeted number of units, and then obviously your budgeted manufacturer, sorry, machine hours. All right, we sat down and we looked at that for each of the three companies, right? Then at the end of the financial period, we then said, what were our actual results in regards to those very same things, okay? Awesome stuff. Right. 
Then it says, these companies all use predetermined allocation rates, what we've just been talking about, to apply overheads over the year. All right, in other words, during the actual financial year. And for company X, it uses labor costs as a base. Okay, so how do we get the allocation rate for labor costs? Let's flip back to example 5.6. If we look for labor costs, it's the third one there. It says allocation rate is equal to budgeted manufacturing overhead divided by budgeted labor cost times 100. Okay, so we want a percentage there as the allocation rate. Okay, so then we say, okay, what is our budgeted manufacturing overhead for company X? Okay, can you see I've got the formula there on the screen for you? Yeah, we're doing 5.12. Yes, I did. See how nice it is to be my children. You fail by choice if you're working with me. You fail by choice. Okay? Right. And now with the YouTube channel. We never had this thing last year. You guys have a reference so you can be playing the whole semester and then two weeks towards the exam or test you take the time to actually learn everything we've been doing and you could still pass it's a dream <laughs> wow 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 i'm just happy my class today is talkative to be quite honest with you i appreciate the interaction Ne? Mm. Okay, cool. So we have our formula there. What is our total budgeted overhead? Has it, can you guys see it? Have they given it to you? They haven't given it to you, right? They haven't said this is the total budgeted overhead, right? Now we have to ask ourselves, what makes up total cost? We know that we have variable costs, right? And we know that we have fixed costs, 100%. So, total cost is equal to what? Fixed cost plus variable cost. Thank you very much, sir. So now, since we know this is the budgeted overhead, we then need to look at our budgeted variable cost and our budgeted fixed cost. And we need to add them together to get our total budgeted overhead. So, in other words, for company X, we're saying 260,000 plus 100 and 20,000. And what does that give us? Yep, it gives us 380,000. Okay, and then we know that that is divided by our budgeted labor costs. And what do we have as our budgeted labor costs? There in the table? 95,000. Okay. All right, so this is where they can trick you out. Failure to gather the right information. You might have mastered the formula, but now it's like, yo, where do we get the budgeted overhead? Okay, then we do that. Then we say the 380 divided by 95 times 100, what percentage do we get? Come in, come in, if you belong here. <laughs> So what do we get, guys? Four hundred? Four hundred percent. Okay, we get four hundred percent. Now we want to calculate the second part was to calculate the total manufacturing costs as determined during the year. Remember, we don't have the actual cost during the year. We're working with this allocation rate, okay? So we're saying 400% times what to get our allocation rate? Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So total manufacturing uh, costs, 
do they have the formula yes they have the formula for that on page in my textbook let me say before example 5.6 if you look there just above under applied and over applied manufacturing overhead can you see that formula there that's the formula for your cost of production in other words your total manufacturing overhead okay so you need to know that formula it is direct material cost with direct labor cost plus your applied manufacturing overhead cost and then you get your total manufacturing cost so that's what we want to calculate so then we say okay what is our direct material cost And here is where things get a little bit tricky because the next question you're asking yourself is, am I using the budgeted man, uh, material cost or am I using the actual? What you use is the actual in that formula, okay? Because it says what? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So then we say, okay, what was our actual direct material cost? Should be 184,000, am I right? What was our actual direct labor cost for company X? 96,000. Then we say, okay, we know that our application rate is 400,000. And it's 400,000 of what? Labor cost. Am I right? Yes, labor cost. Our base was labor cost, right? So we then say 400,000, oh, sorry, 400% 400 times the labor cost, the actual labor cost. And what do we get? Three hundred and eighty thousand. Okay. Now, if you add up those three, you should then get this six hundred and sixty-four thousand. Okay. Right. So now we have our total manufacturing cost. Right. Now the next thing, what do they want us to do in part three? Whether manufacturing costs were over or under applied during the year. What's the formula to find out if something is over? or under applied, we say budgeted, a budgeted total overhead minus the actual total overhead. So in other words, this, uh, this 384,000, which was our budgeted, then minus the actual manufacturing overhead. Do we have the actual manufacturing overhead? So you can actually, technically, you can do it either way. My recommendation to you is that you go budgeted and then actual. And I'll explain why. So let's scroll down. Okay. So your applied manufacturing overhead is, is the same as budgeted uh, manufacturing overhead. And then actual manufacturing overhead is actual manufacturing overhead. How did we get the actual manufacturing overhead? Again, we said our fixed manufacturing overhead plus our variable manufacturing overhead. And we get that from the actual results in that table. Okay? So that 412,000 is coming from 132,000 plus 280. Okay? And this is now why I say you should start with the applied first. Okay. You'll see mathematically you can do either one. You just have to understand which one you're with. When, so let's jump into it. So when we say 384 minus 412, we then obviously get 28,000. Okay. Now, can you see that the applied is less than that of the actual? Okay. 
So in other words, we budgeted that we we're going to spend 384. But what did we actually spend? 412. So can you see that we are under allocated? In other words, we're short based on our budgeted versus what we actually ended up spending. So that's why I say you should start with this first, because the moment you get a negative here, you already know that I'm under. Does that make sense? If you started with the 412 and then said minus 384, then you would have had to think a little bit to say, but wait, 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 wait. What was my actual, what was my budgeted? And does this mean that I'm, because you get a positive, you may assume that no, actually I'm, I'm actually over. But in actuality, you're under. So I, I just like to tell my students to do it this way, just so that they know. The moment you get a negative, you know you're already that you're under. Does that make sense? So you're not wrong. Again, it's just for that purpose, I, I recommend that you do it this way. OK. So we've dealt with company X. We now move on to company Y. All right. Now, again, we want to get the allocation rate first. How do we do that? Here they say, company Y uses labor hours as a base. So let's go back to example 5.6. Uh, we are doing question 5.12 in your textbook. So let's go back to example 5.6 and let's see, how do we get the allocation rate for labor hours? All right, labor hours is the second one that they give us there. And the allocation rate, they say, is budgeted manufacturing overheads divided by budgeted labor hours, the total budgeted labor hours. So then we go to company Y and we say, what was the budgeted overheads? Again, we say total budgeted fixed overheads plus your total variable overheads. All right, and that should give you if you add those two together, oh yes, because we, we need to calculate that together. According to my calculations, that should give you 310,000. Everybody with me? Put together? Okay. Then we say, what were the budgeted labor hours? For company Y, how many are they? They're in the table? Somebody said it, 31,000, 31,000 hours. Okay, so when we then divide 310,000 by 31, what do we get? We get 10, 10 rand per labor hour. Okay, so now we have our allocation rate. We have our allocation rate for company Y. Then we say to ourselves, now it's time to go to the next step where we calculate the total manufacturing cost as, uh, as determined during the year. Okay, so again, we say, what was our direct material cost, the actual direct material cost for the year? We get that under the, uh, as, uh, sorry, we get that under the results, actual results. What was our direct material cost? Sorry? For company, For company Y, yes. 128, 500. Thank you very much, sir. And then our direct labor cost under actual again. Thirty-eight thousand two hundred. Forty-eight. Thank you. Forty-eight. Okay. Then we now have to calculate what was the applied manufacturing overhead. Here we know that it was 10 rand per hour. Oops, sorry. And here we know, let's fix that up. And here we know um, what was, we have to say 10 rand, what are we timesing this by? We're timesing this by the actual labor hours. Am I right? I 
think so. Yes, by the actual labor hours. What are our actual labor hours? 32, 100, right? I think we're going to be short. Because can you see that our actual labor hours is greater than is greater than our budgeted labor hours? Can you see that? Remember with our budgeted we had how many labor hours? We had 31 thousand hours okay let's see if i'm correct so here yeah, what are we going to get it's just times 10 so that would be 321 okay and then when you add that up do you get the same amount there do you get this 497,700? You get the same? All right, all right, awesome. All right, awesome. Okay, then again, we want to calculate, are we under or over? And we know it's the same principle. We say our applied manufacturing overheads, were they greater than or less than the actual manufacturing overheads? So we know our applied was 321,000. And our actual manufacturing overhead was 296. So we were over. We over applied. Okay, what that then means is we budgeted more for manufacturing overheads than we actually incurred. So I was actually wrong. Okay, I was actually wrong. Okay. Right. Is everybody happy so far? Okay. Cool. Then we move on to Company Z. Company Z. And with Company Z, it says it uh, Company Z uses units of production as a base. So again, we can go back to question 5.6, and you'll see that the formula there is what we have on the board where it's budgeted overheads, but this time divided by number of units. Okay, so we ask ourselves, what is the budgeted overheads for company Z? We're saying 200,000 plus 100,000. We're getting that from the budgeted uh, table, and that obviously is going to give you 300,000. Okay, then we ask ourselves, what were the budgeted number of units? that we anticipated that we're going to have for company Z. And there you can see it's 150, okay? We see that from the table again, or as well, should I say. Okay, so how much, what's our allocation rate for company Z? It's two. Two rand per unit. Guys, very important. You need to master these different ways of calculating the allocation rate. Why do I say you need to master it? Because you, some people could give me 2% here. All right? Some people could give me um, two rand per hour. It can't be per hour because we're working with units. Okay? So I need you guys to understand this as well because there's a mark here for getting the right notation. Okay, so make sure that you actually take the time to, to understand the different allocation rates and how they are calculated. Okay, it needs to be here. Okay, the good part is you know you're always dividing the budgeted overheads. And then it's just about what, what am I dividing by? Does that make sense? Okay, so we have that now we can do our total manufacturing costs again. We're looking at the actual direct materials for company Z, which is 202,000. So 202,000. And then what is our actual budgeted, sorry, our actual labor cost for company Z? 
63,800. Then we need to work out what was our applied manufacturing overhead cost. We did calculate two rand per unit. And then we have to ask ourselves, how many actual units did we have? How many? 148,038. 43, yes. 800. 800. Okay, and so that's just basically times two. So that should give us 280, mm, 80, 87, right? 87, how much? I uh, put an extra zero here. 87, how much? I think it's 600. Okay, right. Okay, and then our total manufacturing cost should then give us that that five hundred and uh, five hundred and um, fifty fifty three thousand four hundred. Again, we ask ourselves: Did we over or under apply? So here, mm, I don't know why I spun this thing around. But what we should have done is obviously, as we have been doing, is minus the budgeted first. So I'm going to rectify that now. So we know that our budgeted was that 287,000. And then we're saying minus the actual manufacturing overhead that we incurred, which is the 290. So, yep, at least our calculation there is correct. We have a 2,400 under, under apply. Okay. All right. So that then is your question 2.12. Pretty straightforward. Can I tell you the only place where I think it gets a little bit tricky when it comes to this? <laughs> Andrew <laughs> is not buying anything I'm selling. Today. <laughs> I, I don't know. Huh? The tricky bit is knowing when do I use a budgeted amount and when do I use an actual amount. That's where things get tricky. Otherwise, if you know your formulas and what needs to go into your formulas, it's okay. But just knowing when to pull from the budgeted uh, statement and when to pull from the actual, that's where things can go a bit wrong. And the only way to remedy that is obviously to practice this stuff. Okay? So please take your time to, to, to practice this stuff and then you should be fine. All right. A lot of the time when it comes to finance, we don't deter too much from the questions that are asked in the book. So if you master the questions in the book, then you should be good. All right. And what I give you as homework or what I give you as ice tasks, that should be the bare minimum. You guys should be doing the other questions to see the different ways that they could bring the same thing. Okay. And then you'll be fine. Okay. Past papers as well. That goes a long way. Okay, so then the last thing that I want us to do today is question 5.15. Yeah, that was it. That was 5.12. Okay, remember there was the three parts. First thing, allocation rate is what they wanted you to calculate. Second thing was the total manufacturing costs. And then the last thing was the, was it over or under applied? Okay, now with 12.15, we're touching on the very last concept. 
in your chapter 5. The very last concept in your chapter 5 is activity-based costing. And activity-based costing is not tough, but you need to understand what you're actually doing. How does it differ or how is it different from that of traditional costing? With traditional costing, what we simply do is we say, okay, what are my variable costs? What are my fixed costs? We add it up, all right? Or sorry, what, what are my costs per unit? And then you look for the different components that make up the cost per unit and you add them together and then you say, how many units did I make? And you times that by the cost per unit and then you get your total cost for that specific product. Does that make sense? With activity-based costing, we do it a bit differently. All right, and it's more precise. Okay, that's its advantage, but it is time consuming to actually do. Okay, what they say is what different activities go into making this product. Okay, and so I've got a bit of a breakdown here, and I'll show you where you can actually get that breakdown. Mm -hmm. Where is this thing? Uh, so in my textbook, under traditional costing systems and ABC, which is the subheading 5.10.1, which is under your activity-based costing, which is uh, the subheading is 5.10. If you go to the next subheading, which is 5.10.2, it says calculating product overhead cost using ABC. Okay, there they've got the steps for you. All right, and there's five steps. I'd advise you to quickly make notes on those five steps. All right, as I have done on this lovely looking paper. Okay, and I'm just going to read my steps off of this paper. And then I'm going to refer <laughs> to the steps in example 5.7. How many of you agree with me? We should have Andrew in our class a lot more frequently. Mm. I'm gonna, uh, so that's a, a young petition uh, for you to stop banking. You don't know where you're hiding when you're not with us, but um, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, cool. You got to have a personal day. We thank you for your honesty. All right, but let's let's proceed. So, first step when it comes to activity-based costing is identifying activities that consume resources. Okay, because if something is consuming resources, it's obviously going to come at a cost to us because resources are not for free, most. Right? So that's your first activity, identifying, or your first task or step, identifying activities that consume resources. Now, if you look at uh, example 5.1, on page 146 in my textbook, at the top of the page, there where it says the following cost analysis has been provided by management. Can you see there? And they're looking at product X, Y, and Z. Can you see there, there, those are activities. They say setups, uh, inspections, maintenance hours, raw material orders, and external orders. Can you see those are just activities? All right, so that's step one, identifying those activities that take up resources. Then step two, overhead costs assigned to those particular activities. So if you want to see step two practically, you then flip the page back, one page back, and you will see manufacturing overhead costs have been allocated to the following cost centers. Okay, there you see labor rate. Okay, labor rate to assembly, that's a cost center, and then to uh, machining, 
That's another cost center. Can you see how those activities are now being allocated to the cost centers? In other words, you can also look at departments, certain departments, not all of them, are referred to as cost centers. Why are they referred to as cost centers? Because costs are realized as a result of those departments. Does that make sense? So sometimes we use those terms interchangeably, cost centers and departments. Then that's step two. Then step three uh, is determine cost drivers associated to each activity. So what about this activity is being driven by a cost? Or is, what, is, what, what cost is created as a result of this activity? Does that make sense? And that you can see in my textbook on page 148, uh, the table under manufacturing overhead cost allocation. And you see we're now linking the activity that we identified to the cost driver. So if you look at labor, labor, the, the first line item there, the cost driver is labor hours. The more labor hours we have, the higher our labor cost. All right, machine, machine hours is driven by, oh, sorry, machine hours drives the cost of machine. Okay, setup costs of 420,000 is driven by number of setups. The less setups we have, the less setup cost we're going to have. Can you see how they're driving that activity? Okay, and I could go on and on and on, but I'm sure you get the point. Okay, then step four, calculate cost driver rate. Okay, in your minds, I'm sure you're already like, I know exactly how we calculate this. And how we calculate it is by, is by saying, what is the total cost of labor, all right, divided by the number or the total cost uh, driving activity? So we know that labor is 156,000 rand. That's the total cost. How many labor hours did we have, though? Okay. How many labor hours did we have? Um, so there, we actually had 156,000 labor hours, okay? So there you can see in the next table, just below it, they're actually calculating the cost uh, driver rate. You can see there, and the answer there, your cost driver rate for labor is one hour, sorry, one rand per hour, okay? Machine, we do the same thing. The total cost was 144. The total number of machine hours was 288. And then we get 0 0.5. In other words, 50 cents per machine hour. Okay, that's step four. Your final step is then to assign activity costs to products. Okay, so now we go and we say, how much labor hours did this product take to produce one unit? All right, how much machine hours did we take to produce one unit of this same product? And how much setups did we need to do to produce one unit of this product? And so forth and so forth and so forth. Okay, that is now your step four. And there you can see on the next page, you can see product X, Y, and Z. And you can see they break it down as I have just highlighted. Going into each of those cost drivers, all right, and you can see there in each each line item they're saying the setups, for example, per product times the rate, and that's how you're getting the cost over there, okay? And so that is how you then calculate your overhead cost per unit under your activity-based costing. Does it make sense now? Okay, like I said, it's a whole lot more work because now you have to identify each of the activities that result in realizing a cost. Okay, right. But let's, uh, okay, let's, let's uh, do the traditional based costing, so traditional costing, and then we'll have a break. Because activity 5.15 is basically showing you 
the difference between how we would traditionally calculate the cost per unit and how we would do it under activity-based costing. So if I'm to quickly read there, it says compare and contrast the product costs, direct uh, costs and overhead costs using traditional and ABC costing. All right, you are presented with the following budgeted financial information for BLIP PTY LTD. Overheads are currently allocated to product costs as follows. Machinery department at 1 rand 44 cents per machine hour. Assembly department 0 0.99 cents per direct labor hour. Okay. Then it goes on to say, mm, it has been determined that the overheads could be allocated by the following cost pools. So there they're giving you uh, machining services, the total cost, set up, set up costs, everything, right? So those are, they're giving you your actual cost drivers, the total cost drivers, and then they're giving you the actual quantities, all right? And then obviously to get your rate, you're going to divide uh, the total cost by the quantity. All right, the following estimates have been provided by management for the period. Okay, then can you see they're giving you a breakdown of how many setups for X, Y, and Z, and uh, customer orders and supply orders, okay? All right, awesome stuff. So we now know what that question is about. So let's just quickly do the traditional and then when we come back, we'll just deal with the activity-based costing, and then we'll call it a day. Are we still fine? Okay, so for X, what then is the direct material or prime cost per unit? Do they give it to us? Yep, they do. So we get it from the table there under direct material and labor costs per unit, 38. Okay, and maybe whilst we're there, we might as well just do Y. What do I have for Y? 101, what do I have for Z? 78, okay. Then for my machine department, here now you have, we have to do some calculations because we are saying, just for example, ah, let me do it this side. Oh, goodness me, this is a mess. Okay, so I'm just going to say it. There they tell us, in the textbook, they say machine hours per unit. In other words, machinery department, two hours for product, for product uh, X per unit. Okay, so two hours, and then they say machinery department, the allocation is one rand 44 per machine hour. So two times one rand 44 is going to give us what? Two rand 88. So that's for product X, 2.88. Product Y, same principle. How many hours does it take? It takes six hours. So six times one rand 44. What do we get? Eight point six four. Okay, and then for Z, we're saying five hours, five machine hours per unit times the one rand 44. What do we get? 7.2. That's it. Okay. 7.2. We follow the same principle for the assembly department, but this time the rate is uh, 99 cents per direct labor hour. So 99 times 8 for product X. What do we get? Eight 
times 99 cents should be 7.92. Okay, product Y, we're saying that 99 cents times 4, 96, thank you, sir. And then finally for product Z, we're saying 2 times 99 cents should be one rand something, 98 cents. Okay, awesome stuff. Okay, and then we have our total cost per unit. Can you see? I'm gonna highlight it in yellow here. So all of those should give you, when you add them up, you'll then get your total cost per unit, which is highlighted in yellow. And then we say, how many units are we anticipating that we're gonna make? If you look in that table there, it says production output units. That's the total that we, are budgeting to make so 60,000 times your 44.80 for product X that's how we're getting a total cost of 2 million nine hundred and twenty eight thousand and so on and so forth for product X and product Y sorry product Y and product Z respectively okay so this I'm sure you guys are now used to this you've you see, we played around with this. Okay, the only thing that's slightly different is obviously just the machine department and the assembly department. Okay, but otherwise we're, we've, we've seen the direct material, the direct labor uh, costs. All right, here they just said prime cost per unit. Okay, they could have also said direct cost per unit because we know direct cost is incorporating both the direct material and your direct labor. All right, and then after that, we will then begin with your activity-based costing, which we will do after our 10-minute break. So if you guys could come back by 3, we'll finish that off, and then we will call it a day.